Let's see what happens. This weekend was an eye-opening experience. I've been off-roading twice before. Once with an experienced driver in Moab. Then again in Moab driving a rented Jeep. I had a lot of fun both times. But this weekend was different. We didn't know where the f we were going. Vehicles were getting stuck, stuff was breaking, and people were massacring their underwear. Upon seeing this side of four-wheeling, I realized I had been missing out on half the fun. It all started when my friends Nick and Jep came through Asheville for a visit. They were on their way to Tennessee to use all this stuff, and tempted me to come along. With my wife out of town, it would mean that I'd need to bring the boys with me. Bosco is a sporting pup, but drama, not so much. It would be interesting to see how he did. So we set out to none other than Windrock Mountain, home to every off-road vice that exists. Yep, this is the same Windrock that has year-round downhill mountain biking, and the venue that hosted the Pro GRT in March. Nick and Jep rode the downhill park for a day, while I followed the doctor's orders and stayed off my bike. Having ridden here before, I always wondered what the other 73,000 acres of this private mountain had to offer. With a cabin full of like-minded individuals, I'd be able to experience those acres the best way possible. If it wasn't for the moto, why wouldn't you just drive the Jeep down here? If we break something, it'll be pretty easy to just pull it back on the trailer and not have to worry about it. It's a lot less stress. Use less fuel with this whole setup than you would just driving the Jeep. <laughs> how, many, how many miles per gallon would you The Jeep like gets like 10. And we were getting, what, 15? 15 coming down? What's the likelihood of something happening where you would have to tow it home? I don't know, I'd say 50% of the time it's happened to us. People that are into these sort of things are mechanically inclined or they have a lot of money. So do you have spare parts with you? Yes. Like what? And tools. Axle shafts, tires, wheels, U-joints, sometimes brake lines. Like mountain biking, four-wheeling encompasses a vast abyss of terms, techniques, and best practices. What do you normally air it down to? We're going to air it down to 15 PSI. Also like mountain biking, everyone postpones their repairs until the last possible second. On most trails, you can just drive and follow the vehicle in front of you. If you've driven a mud puddle or mound, you've more or less driven them all. But on rougher trails, things are less predictable. How is this pants? Are they really brown? Oh, oh. oh this is... Ah! Oh, mint. Holy sh... I've heard it said that getting stuck is half the fun. For the remaining vehicles, we used a spotter. A spotter is someone outside who works with the driver to plan a line. A good spotter can mean the difference between safe passage and a damaged vehicle. These instances reminded me of riding Mount Frome in Vancouver. Each feature was so crazy that we all dismounted and coached each other one by one. Four-wheeling is more or less always like this, if you're pushing your vehicle's limits. Today, I've been using the terms four-wheeling, off-roading, and jeeping interchangeably. But technically, jeeping refers to the driving of jeeps only. On that day, we were most definitely jeeping. Our group drove a mix of Jeep Cherokees, Wranglers, Comanches, and even a Crew Manche? I'll bet you've never seen one of these, unless you're already following Kenny. Jeep never decided to go through with building a crew cab, you know? So we started with a 98 Jeep Cherokee, cut it in half. We found the donor Comanche, cut that in half. This is a two-door Jeep Comanche pickup, built through the late 80s and early 90s. This is a four-door Jeep Cherokee SUV, built through the early 2000s. These two vehicles smashed in Kenny's garage, and out came a four-door crew cab Comanche, dubbed the Crew Manche. 
Kenny's creation has gotten him some well-deserved fame in the jeeping community, and that was before the Crew Manchi was even finished. This was his first time off-roading, and this is probably the first good video of it in action. In many instances, it was the most capable vehicle there. Also doing quite well was Drama, happy as a clam and cool as a cucumber. He rode shotgun in the Crew Manchi for all but the gnarliest climbs, while his buddy Bosco was not doing quite as well. As the day wore on, I saw more and more reasons why my audience of mountain bikers seems to have a lot of overlap with the jeeping crowd. Besides the obvious similarities with four-wheeling like being in the woods, mountain biking is also about challenging yourself, learning new routes, and pushing your equipment to its limits. It's also about having a great time with friends and trusting one another. But as we got deeper into the woods and continued to lose sunlight, we were wondering how the hell we were going to get home. As an outsider, I just don't understand how anybody's going to get up this. And I'm sure in two dimensions on a four inch phone screen, it looks really easy, but it looks like a minefield. We'd have to choose one of these hills and get everyone up it, or turn around and go back the way we came. Yeah, well, people gotta start making decisions. So there's an alternate route that's really bad, but not as bad. So they're giving it hell right now. Let's see if it's the best way out of here. One feature of true off-road vehicles is the ability to lock the hubs. Notice how all four wheels of this Comanche turn at the same rate, beasting it up this muddy hill. And notice how this Wrangler is stuck in one spot, with the passenger side front wheel just sitting there. It's not locked, is it? It's not working. What? So the locker is just failing for whatever reason? It's not grip. It's, it's, pre it's pressurized, and for whatever reason it's not, it's not engaging. In these situations, it's nice to have a winch. A winch is a mechanically driven spool of cable that can pull you or someone else out of just about anything. When this thing is tightened up, we're going to have to find safe spots so you don't get cut in half just in case. Once there's tension, tension on it, if it snaps, it's just death to everybody. It's a suspension bridge pretty much. There you go. Oh, oh, all right. There you go. All right, oh, whoa. One by one, the whole troop made it up the muddy climb, and it was finally time for Nick and I to send it. Go passenger a little bit, get your front end a little bit to the left. Keep going. But drop off? No, stay on that. Nick, stay a little driver. into those holes on. and then it snaps back into the latch that, that was pretty good that was pretty good the getting was good we were bouncing around a little bit <laughs> we were still far from finished <laughs> inch by inch obstacle by obstacle we made our way up Windrock Mountain by the end of the day I had experienced real four-wheeling not the sterilized car advertisement version where everything goes as planned. Although I only have the time and money for mountain biking, I'll certainly come along on expeditions like these whenever the opportunity arises. And of course, I can't wait to get back to Windrock for some two-wheeled fun when my wrist heals. Thanks for four-wheeling with me today, and I'll see you next time.
you like the crew manchie, you can see it grow and evolve on Kenny's Instagram. I'm sure he'll be posting some pictures and clips from the Windrock trip soon.